Hi, we're, uh, I'm here with Tantek Celik from Microformats and Rohat Kari from CommerceNet. And uh, you, were, uh, you gave a presentation, a workshop yesterday on Microformats that was, uh, was a big hit. A lot of people talking about it. So um, can you tell me what Microformats are? Thanks, David. I appreciate the, uh, the, the kind remarks about the workshop. Well, that's what I hear. So we, we did give a workshop uh, with, uh, it was actually a panel with numerous industry experts uh, and, and, and blogging company representatives. And we talked about microformats, which are essentially a set of really simple data formats for capturing structured information on web blogs and other web pages in a way that can be reused by search engines, indexers, and aggregators really easily. Now, a lot of folks have attempted to solve this kind of problem before. But one of, the, one of the big differences with microformats is that they are designed for humans first and machines second. So what do I mean by that? <laughs> what I mean by that is Good that question. for humans first, you want to keep things as simple as possible. And you want to make sure that you model your formats based on existing behaviors rather than trying to invent a format and then teach everyone to use it. All right, so instead of sort of a top-down a structured approach where a committee establishes a set of standard ways of expressing some piece of information like uh, calendar, uh, dates and events and calendars. Um, this, is, this is different. Um, so who, th is that right? Uh, that's, that's essentially correct. In, in some ways, there's, there's much of a bottom-up sort of uh, grassroots effort behind microformats because of the simplicity in, in creating microformats. Yeah, so what sorts of information, what, what are good examples of the sorts of information that microformats will capture? So one of the things, well, what I do full time is I work for Technorati, and one thing we spend a lot of time doing is looking at blogs. So we notice a lot of patterns in blogs, that people, what are the things people talk about most often? People talk about people a lot, contact information, organizations, events, reviews, Bloggers love to put up lists of things, and, so, and they like to talk about their social networks as well. So we've noticed all these patterns in what people are already doing, and said, well, with just a little bit of work on top of that, either on the blogging tool providers or other services, we can take this information, which is sort of semi-structured, and make it so that it can be easily found and indexed by search engines, and have bloggers become, you know, have their blog posts revealed more, be more popular, et cetera. Yeah. So if I'm a blogger, um, and I'm talking about an event or a person. Mm -hmm. What is it that I'm going to have to do in order to make that uh, information findable by a computer? What, 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 do, what do I have to enter? What is, uh, who's going to do the UI? What's it going to mean to me? So one of the things that, that we did with, with microformats, especially for events, so let's take that because that's a really good example, is we said rather than trying to invent our, invent our own events format from scratch, which is sort of the, the first thing that a programmer will do. We said, well, let's look out there for events formats that already exist, see what's out there implemented, interoperable even. And there's this nice standard called iCalendar that's done by the IETF, RFC 2445, that's actually quite successful and has clients on numerous, numerous, numerous uh, platforms. So what we've done is we've taken that and said, what's the equivalent in, X, in XHTML? So we've created an HCalendar. Right, so XHTML is? XHTML is essentially at this point the lingua franca of the web. If you're publishing something on the web and you want people to view it and you want to style it and design it so that it looks nice, you're going to be using XHTML. So it, it, the X in front of the HTML indicates that this is actually a slightly more structured, it, it's HTML with, a more, with stricter rules, but it's still readable. Um, HTML and XHTML are still readable by the same browsers. That's right. So, so today's browsers can actually read and display HTML and XHTML, and, and the X in XHTML stands for XML, and that's where we get some of our better structure and strictness from. All right, so you're using this established standard that uh, people are using generally even if they don't know that they are, and you're adding right. to it some set of markup uh, code that's, um, when possible, taken from existing standards. That's right. Okay, and as a user, so I, I say I just went to the Here's an unlikely thing. I just went to the Bruce Springsteen concert last night, or mm -hmm. I'm going to it, and I want to make that event um, findable by, by computers. I right. want to get it slightly more regular. What is it, that, as a blogger, I'm going to have to do? So you want to blog about this Bruce Springsteen concert, right? Yeah, not so really, but... Yeah. Let's say you do. <laughs> okay. So there's probably a couple of things. There's a couple of different ways you might be doing this. The first is, perhaps you're using 
an online event service like EVDB or Upcoming.org, and you go to their site, you have the event, you, that's how you got the information about it, now you want to blog it. Now what's great is that these sites have already implemented HCalendar support, and so all you have to do is use one of the tools out there now, one of these open source tools, to take the HCalendar out of that event page and copy it and then paste it into your blog. And so you can literally say, ah, I've, I'm blogging this event, and it copies the markup over for you. You don't have to type anything yourself, and then you just type your commentary about it afterwards. Okay. Um, and at some point, you expect that either the blogging tool manufacturers or people doing plugins and bookmarks will make it even easier just to type in the, uh, type in the event and have the markup done pretty much automatically? Precisely. So e even if you don't have such a site to go to or an event, and you just want to say, well, I went to this event, I want to type in some information about it, there's already an open source HCalendar creator, and there is, in fact, a Firefox, what they call Grease Monkey uh, extension, which will easily, which puts up a little form that, shows, that lets you type in the event title, you know, where was it, when was it, maybe even a URL, and automatically creates the markup for you so that you don't have to type any tags or anything yeah. into your blogging tool, and then you just type whatever you want to